welcome to today's video about how to set up and carry out Punnett squares for two trade crosses, where we're taking a look at two traits at the same time. So for example, what would we have to do if we wanted to know what happened if we were breeding together tall red flowered plants and short white flowered plants? What kind of outcomes will we get? Will we get any that are tall and white, or will we get short with red, or will they all look kind of like the parents? So setting up two trade crosses is a lot like single crosses, just bigger, and there's kind of an intermediate step that we got to do first. So let's take a look at the next slide. Step number one is always to figure out what the parents' genotypes are. Uh, when we're doing genotypes now with two different traits, we'll have four different letters. So let's take a look at what our two parents are. Here's number one, heterozygous tall plants, and homozygous for red flowers. That's parent number one, all of those traits. So heterozygous for tall, and we've got a little sense here, tall is dominant. So heterozygous for tall has to be big T, uh, little t. And homozygous for red flowers. Red is dominant, so big R, big R. That's our first parent. Second parent. So I change my pen here to uh, a different color. Second parent is this one. Short plants with white flowers. That's our parent number two. Short plants is recessive, so we know it has to be little t, little t. And it has white flowers. White flowers is also recessive, so it's little r, little r. Again, whenever we do two trait crosses, we always have two pairs of letters. One is for the first gene, and one is for the second gene. Uh, and you always write them in that order. So here's the traits, the alleles for the first gene. Here's the alleles for the second gene. So now let's see how we use these to set up a Punnett square. Okay, so now that we have our two parent genotypes, you see I've written down here TTRR and little t, little t, r, little r, little r, we have to figure out how many different possible combinations there are. Here's the dif difficult part with this. This is the trickiest thing of the whole process. What are the two, four possible combinations of possible genes, one gene from each pair, that can get passed on to the offspring? We know that due to segregation, that this parent over here, this tall red flower, is going to only pass on one of these two T's, but it's also going to pass on one of these two R's. So what are the different possible combinations that it could pass on? It's got to pass on one T and one R. So it could either pass on a big T from the first pair and a big R from the second pair, or a little T from the first pair and a big R from the second pair. Because the second pair, there's only big R's. It's going to be one big R or the other big R. It doesn't really matter which one it is. On the right side here, our, sm our small white plant, Again, it's got to pass on one of these T's and one of these R's. Well, in this case, it's pretty easy to see. It's going to be a little t from the first pair, one or the other, and a little r from the second pair. This is independent assortment that the t from the first pair does not affect the r from the second pair. That's why we can get different combinations over here on the left. There's actually a pretty easy method to figure this out. You guys know the FOIL method from math class. First, outside, inside, last. This is the easiest way to pick out the pairs. You'll never go wrong. You'll never miss one. So we'll take a look at T, T, R, R. If you pick the first of each pair, that's this T and this R. So that's one possibility. Outside would be the outside two, which would also be this big T, and now this outside R, which is also a big T, big R. So we have two possible ways of getting that. The I stands for inside. Here's your two inside letters right here. It's the, I'll change my pen color here. It's the inside little t. And the inside R, here's our first inside right here, little t, big R. And last, the last of each pair, the last of the two T's and the last of the two R's, it's T, R. And again, you can kind of see that it's the same pairs, two different ways of coming at the same idea. At least with the FOIL method, you know you're not going to miss anything. So even over here on the right side, there's still four pairs. The first one of each pair is little t, little r. The outside is going to be this one and this one, outside T, outside R. The inside is the two inside letters, the inside T, inside little r. And then the last of each pair is going to be that T and that R. So we still have four different possibilities. Little t, little r, little t, little r, little t, little r, and little t, little r. I know it looks weird to say that we have to do the same thing four ways, but those are the four possible types of gametes that we can produce. Oh, gametes are eggs and sperm. Sorry about that. Next step. Once we know what our four methods are, our four uh, possibilities are, we need to set those up on our Punnett square. So remember, when we had big T, little t, big R, big R, the four possibilities were big T, big R first, 
outside, big T, big R, inside, little t, big R, and last, little t, big R. Well, just like we did in the last one, we're going to put those across the top of our Punnett square. Now, each time when you do these, there's going to be two letters at the top of each column, one for the T gene and one for the R gene. You would never want to put, like, two little T's or two little R's or something like that up there. Same thing was true with our other parent, little t, little t, little r, little r. Our four different possibilities were little t, little r, little t, little r, little t, little r, little t, little r. We had um, first pair, outside, inside, and last. So with those, again, put those at the front of each of our columns, tr, 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 tr. And that's what you're going to get to set up. This looks different. Again, it's a bigger Punnett square, two letters on each side. So here's mine set up. Now we fill in the inside. Filling it in is pretty similar to how we did it before. Pair up your T's, pair up your R's. So in this top left corner here, uh, we'll have a big T and a little T, and a big R and a little R. How about the next square down? I'm going down to the next one. So in this one right here, it's going to be the same thing, isn't it? Big T, big R. Sorry, that's a wrong way to write that. Always write your pairs of letters together. Big T, little T big R, little r. Take some practice to do that fast, but you'll get it after a little while. Third square down, this one right here. Again, same thing. It's going to get a big T from the top, little t from the side, big R from the top, little r from the side. And same thing is true on the bottom one. T, little t, big R, little r. Notice how I wrote this one across. If you have enough room, go ahead and write it left to right like this. You don't have to write it top and bottom like I did in the other squares. Those other squares are just too skinny. What about the next column? Well, the next column is going to look exactly the same. Big T, little t, big R, little r. Here's the arrow shortcut. I like the arrow shortcut a lot. I know that every single one of these is going to be the same, just like every single one of these was the same. So I can actually just do that, write it with an arrow at the top, and say, this one's going to be the, the one I'm going to write out. This one's identical, this one's identical, this one's identical. That's what this arrow means when I write it like this. And I could have done the same thing in this first one. In fact, I can go back. Um, and erase some of those things. Oops, I won't be able to do that. I could go back and erase some of these other things in here and just say, hey, big T, big, oops, big T, big R uh, is the one that I want up here, and all the rest of these are identical to it. So let's use this arrow shortcut in our third column right here. So what do we got? From the top, we have a big T, oh, sorry, a little T and a big R, and from the side, we have a little T and a little R. So it's going to be little T, little T, big R, little R. And all of these are going to be the same. Why? Because each one of these is the same. If all of these are identical, we know that all of these are going to be the same. And then the last column over here, it's going to be kind of the same thing. Little t, little t, big R, little r, and all of these are going to be the same all the way down. So again, you don't have to fill in every single square worth writing out all four letters in each one. If you know they're going to be identical, go ahead and do that. Your arrows could... Uh, in certain circumstances, go this direction is fine. So if like all these were the same across the top, your arrows could go this way, and that's fine as well. So here's mine filled in with my arrow shortcuts. Just like in the other ones, the next thing that we have to do is to analyze our Punnett square and take a look at what our results are. Here's the good news. In dihybrid crosses, I'm only going to ask you for phenotype ratios, not genotype ratios. So I only want to know what these look like. So here you can see... I've kind of written out the four different possibilities. If we're talking about tall and short and red and white, here's the four different possible types of things we can have. We can have a tall red plant, a tall white plant, a short red and a short white plant. So let's take a look at what our different possibilities are. How many of each do we have in our lovely gigantic Punnett square? Well, let's start at this top left corner here. Big T, little t. Big T means tall. Big R, little r. Big R means red. So this one is tall red. And if you take a look at it, I've got one, two, three, four from that first column that are all tall and red. And the second column is actually the same. Big T is tall, big R is red. So one, two, three, four. It's actually eight that are tall and red from that first part. How about the second or the third column here? This one right here. Little t, little t means white. And big R means, oh, sorry, little t, little t means short, thank you. And big R means red. So these are short and red. It's this one right here. Short red, short red, short red, short red. So that's four. And the next column, last column that we've got here, little t, little t, little r, little r, same thing. Little t, little t is short. Big R means it's red. So it's one, two, three.
3, and 4. So it's actually 8. And we have none of these and none of these. So our overall ratio is 8 tall red to 8 short red, or 50% and 50%. Your turn. Try to see if you can set one up here. We're going to take a look at uh, a cross that happened between A, uh, a plant that started off our parent plants that had uh, true, true breeding green pods, yellow seeds. You can see what their original genotype was. We cross them with these guys, which were yellow pods with green seeds. You can see that um, yellow pods is recessive and green seeds is recessive. It's kind of weird to say that. Uh, and we've got now these hybrid plants, big G, little g, big Y, little y. Your job is to try to figure out, first thing first, see if you can figure out the FOIL method, what are the four different possibilities of gametes that you could get, combos of G's and Y's that you could get from this big G, little g, big Y, little y uh, plant. When you're ready, go on to the next slide. Okay, so I know this whole one is filled out, but what I want you to focus in right now is that this idea of setting up the Punnett squares. And where did these letters come from? So remember the whole idea here is FOIL, F-O-I-L. So if we've got big G, little g, big Y, little y, the first is going to be big G, big Y, and there it is. The outside is going to be big G, little y, there it is. Inside will be little g, little y, and there it is. And then the last one is going to be the little g and the little y. That's the last of each pair, and there it is. Same on both sides. So there's how we can do our first outside, inside, last. So if you did not get yours set up correctly, you might want to go back and recheck that. But you want to make sure that you've got big G, big y, big G, little y, little g, big y, and little g, little y on both sides because those were our two parent plants. Now in this particular Punnett square, you can see everything's already been filled in. The big G, big Y, big G, big Y, kind of filled in to make this particular square. Same thing down here, filled in from this one. And as you go through, you can see all the genotypes are listed in each particular square. This one's nice because it actually showed you all the little phenotypes as well. Remember the first big G, big G is the color of the pod. The first big Y, big Y is the color of the P itself. So when we have this all filled out, and you can check against your work, the last thing we need to do is to do our check on our phenotypes. Over on the right, here's all of our different phenotypes that I have listed. You have a green pod and a yellow P. Remember, green pod is dominant, yellow P is dominant. So how many of those do we have? So if we take a look in our Punnett square, we figured out there's one green and yellow. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we've got nine green pods and yellow peas. How about the next one? Green pods and green peas. Do we have, how many of those do we have? Remember green pods dominant, green pea is recessive. So there is one, two, three of those. Third one down, yellow pods and yellow peas. Yellow pods recessive, yellow pea is dominant. How many of those do we have? One, two, three of those as well. And then our last step is how many of them do we have that are recessive for both traits? Yellow pod is recessive, green peas are recessive, and we have one lonely one. There you have it. End of the period. Nine to three to three to one is your typical phenotype ratio.